Hey guys, I'm Joe, you're watching Theojo Tech, and I recently came across a cool technology called Dolby Vision HDR. Hadn't really heard of it a lot, but the more I read about it, the more I got excited about it, so I thought I would talk to you guys about what exactly Dolby Vision is, and why I think this is probably the future of TV, even if this specific technology isn't the front runner in the coming years, but it's still very important and really cool. So basically, Dolby Vision is a standard that was created by Dolby to allow the capture and playback of much higher dynamic range images than normally captured by the current standards for TV. So as a little bit of a background so you understand what I'm talking about, every TV that you watch follows the same standard, which creates a limit for how bright and how dark you can have an image. That way, no matter what type of TV you're watching on, the image is going to look pretty much the same or at least with the same amount of like brightness and shadows without anything being totally blown out on certain ones. But the standards today are usually based on old cathode ray tube TVs, CRTs, so they're a little bit outdated. Specifically, the current standard for HD TVs is called Rec 709, and this actually limits the dynamic range in a unit called nits. Now, that is basically a unit of brightness, and in the Rec 709, it says that a broadcast stream can only have a hundred different shades. It goes from zero to a hundred nits, and 100 is the brightest you can go, and zero is the lowest. Now this creates a standard so that all TVs can have a certain you know, range that they have to display, and it just allows manufacturers to have something to go on. But obviously, if you look around, the scene that you're looking at right now in your room or whatever is gonna have much more shades of brightness than just 100. In fact, there's probably infinite shades, and our eyes are much more capable than 100. In fact, some estimates say that it's in the millions or billions of different shades that our eye can perceive, possibly. So you can kind of think of the dynamic range as the resolution of brightness. Now, the downside to having a standard that all TVs can adhere to is that even if a TV is much more capable than the standard, it can't take advantage of the added technology of that TV. It might be able to display 300 nits, but because the standard only supports 100, you might not necessarily get a better picture out of that TV. Now, a lot of modern TVs, especially high-end ones, will stretch and do some post-processing to add in dynamic range on a Rec. 709 standardized image, but it wouldn't be as good as a natively shot high dynamic range image. So basically the standard today for TVs are very limiting and only encompass a tiny, tiny fraction of what our eyes are actually capable of and even a, also a small fraction of what the TVs themselves are capable of. Now in addition to brightness and dynamic range, the current standards also limit the color gamut. Now every TV, any screen you have has a so-called color gamut for that particular display which simply says which colors and how many colors that display is capable of distinguishing and showing. Most displays you'll see are 8-bit displays, which mean they can display up to around 16 million colors, which might sound like a lot, but nothing close to what our eyes are capable of again. Now for TVs, again, they are very limited by the Rec. 709 color gamut because they were originally designed for cathode ray tubes and they wanted to make sure that whatever colors you're capturing and playing back are able to actually be displayed on the monitor. So they developed a standard for Rec. 709 that is kind of a small color gamut, but in those, basically every single monitor you have is able to display those colors. Now there is a new standard called Rec. 2020, which is used for ultra high definition TVs, and that is capable of displaying many more colors, a much larger color gamut. However, it does not specify the dynamic range in this standard. So even though you're getting more colors, you're not getting any better dynamic range necessarily. Now one issue with having a very limited dynamic range is that when you get brighter colors, it goes closer to white. So say you have a very bright blue sky that you wanna show. In order to make that sky look bright and blue, you have to make the blue pixels 
brighter, obviously, but in that dynamic range that's limited, it's gonna push it further towards white, so it's gonna look more washed out. So you don't have a lot of leeway in making different colors look brighter without also washing them out because you're gonna hit that highest white point sooner than if you have a higher dynamic range. So Dolby Vision is actually a standard that fixes a lot of these problems. It specifies a much, much higher dynamic range and also a much larger color gamut closer to the size of Rec 2020, but again, it has a higher dynamic range that isn't necessarily specified in Rec 2020. So instead of just going from zero to 100 nits, those are the units of brightness again, the Dolby Vision standard actually goes from zero to 10,000. So if you were to have a TV that fully supports this huge dynamic range, obviously the scene is going to look much more realistic because like real life, it's going to be able to display more shades of brightness for each color. So you're gonna be allowed to have much brighter things in the scene as well at the same time as darker things in the scene so you don't have to kind of crush the whites and blacks together to make it fit within that dynamic range that you do now. And also, as I mentioned, this is gonna make the colors look better because you can have them both bright and colorful without being pushed towards white and washing them out. Now, the way that this standard is designed is that it's basically future-proofed. So they're not expecting TVs to instantly jump to 10,000 nits when usually they're only used to going around 100. So what they're assuming is maybe in 2016, the TVs are gonna support maybe up to around 4,000 nits of dynamic range, but as the technology progresses over the years, they'll be able to expand the technology and make it look better and better and use more and more of this standard. So it's kind of like the opposite of what we have now, where we have these higher technology TVs, but they aren't fully capable of displaying their capabilities because of this limited standard. With Dolby Vision, you have a very expanded standard that's capable of a lot, and the TVs can just take advantage of as much as they're able. Now, remember when I said that right now, TVs kind of have to stretch the limited image to expand into the full dynamic range that the TV's capable of. It's kind of like, again, the opposite with Dolby Vision. They took that into account and knew that not every TV is gonna be the same capability. So this standard actually will be able to tell the TV how to display the image if the image is a higher quality than it's capable of, so it will still look good. So it kind of scales down a very high quality instead of having to scale up a low quality. So what this means is that say in 10 years when we have TVs that are fully capable of Dolby Vision, then you can still create content and manufacture those TVs that are fully capable without having to worry about the lower quality TVs that aren't fully capable. Every TV you make is going to display to its fullest capability. Now Dolby Vision is an end-to-end -end solution. This basically means that you have to record with this standard in mind. Obviously, because if you're not recording in high dynamic range, you're not getting that information in the first place, you're not gonna be able to play it back. But in addition to just movies and videos, Dolby also wants to support video games. Now, I think this is really cool because as you can imagine, a camera that's fully capable of capturing the whole Dolby Vision standard will probably be very expensive and very long ways off before you can even play it back even. But with a video game, since it's all rendered, then you could probably produce those images without needing a camera to record it. So as long as you have a monitor that can play it back and the graphics card supports Dolby Vision, we could probably see video games that support the big standard before cameras and TV shows do. Now Dolby Vision is still pretty new. At the moment of recording, there's only one TV that supports it, the Vizio reference series, and this supports up to 800 nits of dynamic range. So it doesn't obviously support the full range, which they don't expect TVs to yet anyway, but it's still eight times more than a standard TV and the standard recording that you'll see now. There's also not a lot of content, but kind of like 4K, there wasn't a lot in the beginning either. However, there are a couple movies, you may have heard of one, Star Wars The Force Awakening, that was recorded in Dolby Vision HDR. And you can actually see it in the Dolby Vision standard with a way higher dynamic range in certain theaters, I think the AMC Prime ones with Dolby Cinema 
those are the select theaters you can actually see with this much higher dynamic range. So even though it's not widely adopted yet, I think that high dynamic range, maybe Dolby Vision, is really the future of TV. We went through higher resolutions from 1080p to 4K, we went to higher refresh rates, and now we're going to higher image quality itself. Will Dolby Vision be the standard? I don't know. It's the only one right now that supports higher dynamic range. If they release a new standard like Rec 2020 that has a higher dynamic range built in, then maybe that would become the standard because Dolby is proprietary. But I do like that we're starting this trend and I think it's really awesome because I can't wait to see a high dynamic range TV because, you know, it's not anything like we've seen before really. So I hope you guys found all this really cool and I want to know what you guys think in the comments section. Maybe you haven't heard of this yet and you're really excited about it as well. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up so I know you guys enjoyed it and other people do as well and I'm definitely looking forward to hearing from you. If you want to continue watching, I've got some other videos on the right hand side. You can just click those or look in the description for the same link, like if you're on a phone. And if you want to subscribe, I make new videos three times a week, so I think it should be worth it. Looking forward to hearing from you guys, either in the comments section or on Twitter. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.